Hello and welcome, subject sample of Earth. Ignore me. tonight's meeting of Venanon, the Venture Brothers Support Group. I'm thrilled that you were all able to make it, and I'm sorry the bridge was shut down due to acts of costume aggression, but I'm thrilled you made it here safely to the abandoned mine, inside the abandoned theme park, inside the abandoned mall. Tonight's meeting is full of a lot of new faces, so let's begin with an introduction. I'm Professor Brock Savage, and I know your struggle. I help people like you because I'm just like you. I've been struggling with my addiction to the Venture Brothers since 2004. I found myself going deeper and deeper until the point where show jokes were all I was saying. But I ended up starting the Conjectural Technologies podcast with my longtime companion, Beast Lamode. And now we're thrilled that we can host you here with us as well. So if I could ask you to introduce yourself now, Beast. Uh, hi, my name is Beast. I'm a freelance professional antagonist, uh, co-host of the Conjectural Technologies podcast with my buddy, you know, Professor Savage. Um, I've been watching the show for about 17 years now, and uh, I guess that's why I'm here. My friends, families, co-workers, they think I have a problem, but I can stop anytime I want. I just don't want to. So I turn to validation, you know, I turn to find validation uh, from strangers on the internet. And I'm not here because I was ordered by the court. I'm here because I now know that shouting, give me the cuttlefish! And ignore me at the aquarium security guards is now an unacceptable behavior. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing, Beast. And if I could turn now to one of our newer faces, Miss Dolly Pardon. Hi. I have come here because I think I do need help. Whenever I started watching the show 17 years ago, I thought I could only start with one episode, but then I couldn't stop. And then I started telling my friends about it. And whenever I said the Venture Brothers, they said, did we go to high school with them? And I said, no. And then my husband almost left me whenever I kept on saying, scuba, scuba. And it was just so hard. I got it. I got it. I got it. I am glad to be here, and I am willing to accept help from my new Venture sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Your struggle is so appreciated. And if I could turn to another one of your Venture sisters, I believe we have a regular here at our meetings, Miss Calamitous Jane. Hello, I'm Jane. Currently, a part-time hench at a local tailor shop, but I dream of being a professional antagonist. But apparently real life scientists don't want to be arched by a 25 year old. Mm. You know, I've been watching the show since I was eight. Maybe that's done a little something something to my mind. <laughs> I grew up with people not believing me that the show was real and that I might be a little crazy, but we'll deal with that as it comes along. Luckily, I was able to find people who actually knew the show. What a miracle. And because of that, I've been able to infiltrate Conject Tech podcast. And now I've decided to arch them instead. And I've created my own podcast, The Venture Sisters. Uh, we will arch conject tech to our heart's content and we shall proclaim podcasting dominance over them. Thank you so much for sharing. Truly a beautiful sentiment. And I know that one day you'll find that arch that your heart longs for. Such a touching story. Now, if I could turn to another one of your Venture sisters, Miss Audrey Hartburn. Hi, I'm Audrey. I am a mid-level manager of henchmen. Um, I, when I'm not doing that, I spend my time watching Venture Brothers and baking erotic pastries. 
I found my love for ventures in 2005, and I've struggled ever since to find a group of people that love ventures as much as I do. So I've come here for solace. I've come here for camaraderie. I've come here for other people to share my wild venture theories with. I've come here to talk about who I should wed, bed, or behead. Um, <clears throat> I've come here to uh, share my love, most of all, for Brock Sampson. Um, I look forward to getting to know all of you. Thank you. Cut it after I said Brock Sampson. Thank you. <laughs> Audrey, thank you so much for sharing. And these pastries are words I'm afraid to say on a G-rated podcast. I'd like to welcome another regular member, Rilo W. Ward. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm, I'm Rilo. Uh, I've struggled with the Venture Brothers since childhood. I relapse every couple of years when a new season comes out. Um, you know, maybe if I had a Karen for a mom, I wouldn't have developed a venture problem, but I don't. Now I'm 27 and I can't go down a frozen veggie aisle without shouting Spanakopita. Spanakopita! 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 I started a podcast with a friend who's also struggling. I'm just trying to make it through the hiatus episode by episode. Just scratching that Hank and Dean age. Thank you. Rilo, thank you so much for sharing. That itch is something that many of us experience and there are topical creams. You may want to see a doctor. It's helped many of us. Now, of course, we've called you all here today to discuss our own problems and how we can make those problems other people's problems as well. But first, we have a quick word from our sponsors. Hey kids, are you ready to take an adventure on the high seas of breakfast? We have the only seas that matter, color, corn byproducts, and candy. I want some gas station sushi for breakfast. Stop right there, son. This cereal is slightly better than that. Try new Pirate Crunch. It's filled with everything that makes your long car ride better for dad. Flavored with sweet, sweet trank and vitamin K, enough to take you straight to the K-hole for breakfast. Are you a kid or a kid at heart? Or maybe you have an orphan heart in your pleasure can. Tired of eating sargassum and cod liver spots? Does Alpha Dog give you a wee bit of an Oedipus complex? Try Pirate Crunch or your father will never approve of your lifestyle choices. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome out to another very exciting episode of Conjectural Technologies, a venture industries podcast. As always, I'm one of your co-hosts, the inimitable Brock Savage. We are joined, as always, by my longtime companda, the cuddly, the adorable, the terrifying Baron B. Slimode. And once again, we are joined, as always, by our co-host and resident denizen of dinner theater, the Vaude Villain. We have a very special episode for you this week as we are interviewing a man whose name would most likely get Brock Sampson in trouble. His name is either John Rossetti or John Reschetti, depending on whether or not Brock is saying it. And he is a storyboard artist in New York's animation industry, best known for his credits on Adult Swim's The Venture Brothers, Stephen Colbert's our cartoon president, and Nickelodeon's Blaze and the Monster Machines, which is one of the things we're going to be spending a ton of time on today, because our listeners love Blaze and the Monster Machines. Uh, and, of course, uh, Marvel Ultimate Conic Comics. Uh, I'm sorry? I was going to say, yeah, like, STEM-based cartoons are really, like, the <laughs> core uh, of our audience. Like, <laughs> right. I, I break out the ruler and the protractor while I'm watching Blaze, uh, suffice it to say, I have children, so I am way too into that show <laughs> than I should be. Um, then you will know I, all the catchphrases then. Uh, right. Uh, as I understand, <laughs> let's were... blaze. There it is. 
as I understand, you are a graduate of the School of Visual uh, self publish a Visual Arts Cartooning Program, and you yeah. have a background in comic books, sequential yeah. storytelling, and self-publishing, and you're currently preparing your own co-creator own series, Coil, a gene punk story with writer Joshua V. Cher, as well as developing your own creation, The Fool. Now, you have a tremendous resume. You have worked on quite a bit over the years. When did you get started in the animation industry? Yeah, uh, so first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be here. And um, as far as getting started, uh, my first job was on the Venture Brothers for season one. And um, I had never done storyboards before that. I had worked. Uh, solely in comic books, um, doing, uh, as a cartooning major at School of Visual Arts. And, um, you know, I got the job through a friend of mine who was interning at, uh, at the time it was Noodle Soup Productions, was um, producing the show. And uh, he showed me the pilot originally uh, one time when I was hanging out at his show and I thought, or at his house, and I thought, I thought it was hysterical. I'm just like, if there's ever a job that opens up on this show, you got to give me a call. Like two weeks later, he gave me a call. He said, <laughs> he said they had a storyboarding position and, and did I want to come in for an interview? And I was coming home from work that day. Um, and it was already seven o'clock in the evening, I think. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be, I'll, I'll be right there. Let me grab my portfolio. And I ran right back. I ran right in, did my interview with the storyboard supervisor at the time. Um, it was it was my work. It was my comic book work. It was my thesis work that was actually the character, the fool, that when I had first imagined him, um, that caught his attention. And then, uh, you know, it was... Next thing I knew, I was working in animation for the next 16 years. Now, this makes me, because I feel like part of this in my head is going to be a little different than the lived reality that you experienced. Because yeah. when you say, I got home from work and then ran down to the offices, in my head, it looks a little bit like Vintech Tower, but it was probably like a closet off of a bathroom somewhere. <laughs> that's, uh, that's about right. Uh, it was actually, um, let's see. They moved offices several times during the course of the eight or 10 years I was working with them while they were noodle soup. And then they were, you know, in, uh, they were trying to figure out who they were and then they were world leaders. Um, and so, yeah, their first office was about two blocks south of Port Authority on 8th Avenue in New York City um, and uh, yeah it was a little little itty bitty place uh, <laughs> you walk in and they're like on each other's shoulders going Mecca Shiva Mecca Shiva just yeah. On the room. <laughs> yeah there's a little there's exposed pipe everywhere and um, but you know the great thing about it is it was just one of those places where uh, as my, one of my friends described it when he came to visit me he's like you know, it looks like a place where people are rolling up their sleeves and getting the work done. Um, and would you say that that really characterized the general ethos throughout the, because you were there for yeah. what, 10 years, so that's three seasons, right? <laughs> yeah, I was there. <laughs> and that, that's exactly right. Um, because they kept me, they kept me very busy in between the seasons. We produced an entire season of another show um, called Super Normal. Uh, in between season two and season three, uh, where I worked as a storyboard supervisor. Um, that was produced in conjunction with a company out in the UK. I think it aired in Canada and the UK. Um, and uh, they put me on a whole bunch of commercial work. Um, and, you know, yeah. Uh, that's really everyone cool. was there just just you know we were there we were there to get the job done and so only because this is gonna bug we had me. a lot of fun too <laughs> only because this is gonna bug me you said they you got shown the pilot 
which pilot are you talking about? The air number one pilot or my absolute favorite, um, the, the, the mystery of Turtle Bay? Because everyone oh. seems to, to, to kind of not take the greatest shining to that, but I love that episode. No, when I, when I, um, when my friend showed me the pilot, it was the mystery of Turtle Bay. Yes. And love I it. thought it was hysterical. And I actually, when we were chatting the other night, a messenger, um, I fired up Hulu and I watched that again. It's I was crazy. laughing my ass off. Um, it's even funnier than I remembered it. I honestly wish they would have kept that, like, when Brack, Brock goes after the alligator, the way they do that whole montage. I wish that would have just popped up a little bit more, but I, I, I get that it was what a style had, what, had me, to... what had me cracking up was the voice acting of the mummy, when he's beating the mummy up. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's like, hey, there's no reason. <laughs> um, but what, what's, really, what's really special about that, um, that pilot is that... Uh, even though the, the whole thing was, was animated, I believe it was animated in Flash, um, as opposed to the series, which is, which is you know, technically hand-drawn in, in Korea. Um, we had a guy at the time um, named Bill Pressing, and he did a lot of the art direction, and he did a lot of the keyframing on that. And I can really see his characters coming through in some of the expressions and they're really bouncy and expressive and super super good um and just to see just to see his uh his mark on that show uh at that point it was just like oh man that guy's such an incredible artist and he uh we had him season one um but then he he was headhunted by pixar and he's been he's been there ever since um Bastards. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, you know. I got to ask, what was it about the tone of the show that got you so much? Like, what was it about the pilot that got you so excited about working with these guys? So, uh, it really made sense. It made a lot of sense because um, what it was to me was, was, was the satire, the superhero satire. Um, and, you know, what, what made a lot of sense was what I learned later was its connections to the tick, um, to Ben Edlund and, um, to the creator Jackson Public, uh, and his history with the cartoon, getting his start as a storyboard artist on the cartoon and his writing um with the patrick warburton live action um, well, and how uh like as a storyboard artist how intimidating was that to know that like the creator of the show used to do your job mm. in some facet in the industry um i wouldn't say it was intimidating you know because you know it just shows me that like there's that there's that ladder for everybody there's that natural progression that everybody starts where I was starting, you know, and that he obviously, I was working for a guy who obviously has been through the pipeline for a long time and knew how the job was done. Um, you know, and I appreciated that. That brings me to my next question, which is what is the job and how is it done? Like, can you explain uh, exactly what a storyboard is for those of our audience who might not know and what a storyboard artist is actually contributing to the finished product that they see on their television screens. Yeah, in a lot of ways, a storyboard artist um, is, especially in animation, is, is almost a director, uh, cinematographer, uh, costume designer, uh, background designer, uh, actors, uh, you know, it just does it's like everything. So what you're really saying <laughs> is that storyboard artists are the real heroes here? It's one of the hardest jobs you can possibly get in animation. Um, just as penciling is one of the hardest jobs you can possibly do in comic books. Uh, there's a lot of heavy lifting involved. 
Um, that said, thank God there are character designers and background designers and editors and everybody else to pitch in and, you know, um, because, you know, we wouldn't be able to do our jobs on schedule if we really, if we really did have to do all that stuff in the, in the whole process. So, you know, what we're really doing, what, you know, on a production like Venture Brothers is, is just translating the script. We're the first people to translate the script into, um, into the visual shots uh, and determining what the pace of the story is going to be, what the shots are going to look like, and um, you know what the overall tone of the show is going to be. Um, you know, so if there's, you know, if there's a sequence, and you want it to open up and resemble, you know, a moody Indiana Jones esque you know <laughs> cave invasion with magnum pi with magnum pi tagging along <laughs> and uh it's the storyboarder's job to kind of know what that visual language entails what kind of shots are entailed and and make sure that those are used to communicate that idea and get that across and you know make it moody you know make it interesting um and then you know when you're on a production like this, you do have the benefit of the character designers and the background designers getting there first and giving you a lot to work with and play with. Um, and then all you have to do is set up the shots and, and go to town with the character acting. That's really interesting. You know, one of the things that, uh, that strikes me about what you just said is that it makes me think that the relationship between the writers and the storyboard artist uh, is a really special one. And it makes me wonder if it... Hey, you there! Pathetic guy in the black and yellow butterfly costume. Have you been bungling through life, not able to control anyone around you? Do you want to force others to do your bidding? May I present the Hypnoi! Make friends and influence people by influencing people! Just listen to these happy customers. Hypnoi is the best. I love bamboo shoots under my fingernails. The Hypnoi is the best Hypnoi I have ever owned. 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 I love Hypnoi. I do all of my son's homework now. Just call this toll-free number on an untraceable phone and don't forget to stare closely at your screen before ordering. <laughs> Hello. Hi. You're actually seeing us in person. Isn't that weird? Oh, God. See our faces. Ugh. Anyway, I'm Rilo. I'm your vet fan. I'm, I'm your baby fan. And this is Gilda Calamitous Podcasts, an unofficial Venture Brothers We Watch podcast. And we're doing a panel. What? Oh. Why? Why? Uh, uh. <laughs> I was and, not prepared for this. 
Not prepared for the fame, the fortune that comes with being in a niche fandom? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, if you're like me. No. If you're like me. <laughs> Unlikely. You probably own three copies of <laughs> season one of this show. To be fair, I have reasons. One of them has, uh, I discussed this on a Congestual Technology podcast. Mm-hmm. One of them has a disc of Twin Peaks and it came with that in it. So I had to buy, you know, another one. But uh, I had to buy the other one because the third one. Am I just bragging? Maybe a bit. Sign. I'm ju- I'm judging you so hard though. Sign. But anyway, one of the things on this is some really hilarious special features, and that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, it was a trip. It's it's delightful, if only to see Doc Hammer and drag. It's that's fun. Oh, it's beautiful. It's well but, done. Well done. You know, fun fact. I was. Fun fact. I was watching. Yeah? You go. <laughs> oh, yeah, you well, go. oh, I go? Okay. Yeah, well, go. I was, oh, okay. Oh, well, I was going to say, fun fact. Uh, I don't know how I know this. I think it's like podcast. I listen to a lot of stuff to research this show. It's all out in the ether. Uh, Jackson made uh, Doc shave his legs, even though we don't see his legs. <laughs> they are covered up you by to, You have stosses. to commit. You have you to commit. You gotta commit. You gotta commit to being Dr. Girlfriend. But also, um, shaved legs feel wonderful. I, you're not going to hear an argument from me. Um, yeah. So, the special feature we're talking about was an absolute mind. So, this weekend, it, it, it's called while I was watching it, behind the scenes of the Venture Brothers live action movie. I was so, on so much caffeine, my dude. That I, for a minute there, I thought this was some kind of weird fever dream. Yeah, it kind of like kinda, I was I was pounding like through it. so many energy drinks, and then I was watching this, and I'm like, "Have I lost it?" It, it kind of is, is it this the moment like that. Yeah. that I die? It kind of feels like that, yeah. Because uh, you, well, you, first of all, you have you have um. Jackson and Doc both doing, uh, you know, Monarch and Dr. Girlfriend, and then also doing 21 and 24, which is really bad costumes. But they're so beautiful. And if, if you see Doc, he's like this really skinny, he's a really skinny, tiny man, and tall, but tiny. Uh, and just live. Live. <laughs> That's the word. But they put like, a big fat suit on him I to do 21. Know. And it's really a bad fat suit. It is so his great. His arms are so skinny. I know. None of it is proportioned. His head is just Which like, is why I was like, Is this real? The and then you, you got James Baniac wearing a really bad ball cap. The best bad ball cap ever. It's, it's the, the worst is, ball cap. They got the skin tone right. <laughs> That's an accurate tone match. It's just not an accurate transparency match. Mm-mm. Uh, and the fake, the fake beards, the Which eyebrows on the felt. monarch, the eyebrows on the monarch, I see the eyebrows. tiny crown. They were so perfectly like if you're gonna they were cosplay. So perfectly not expressive. Yeah, yeah, they were so perfectly like actors who are they, done. They, they they had to talk like this because of the makeup. <laughs> uh, it was I was yeah. Uh, was uh, for our fans, those are the faces I make during the stand recording. <laughs> yeah, those are yeah. We just we just we do faces at each other. Although we never yeah. see each other when we're recording, uh, <laughs> except for that. But one we time know we together. in spirit. We know deep down. We know we know the we have, other person. We have known each other oh, wow. for so long. It's really, it's really more of like you know, uh, a committed, you know, ma- it's a marriage. It's a marriage. We have a marriage. A weird yeah, marriage. Yeah, there, there's a reason that you know, 
you were very yeah for during my previous actual legal you were referred to as the second husband <laughs> well i uh well was it wrong um <laughs> i mean a little you never paid taxes <laughs> i mean put a ring on it man put a ring on it um but as i was saying this dvd is 14 years old <laughs> You should buy it for this special feature alone. If not that, then the commentaries, which I don't know if you've listened to them, Garden, I've sent you them. I have not had the chance yet. I know. I'm like, oh, so much caffeine, man. So much caffeine, so much, so much, so much, so much so caffeine, much. so little time, so much watching things and not. 100% comprehending if they're actually I, happening. <laughs> what I really like, though, is the fact that it's all portrayed as being on a green screen. Which is great. Um, that awkward hug at the end. That was so heartwarming, though. They're like, come on, no. Get, let me get in there. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> group hug. And I'm like, I need this. I need it's that level wholesome. Of It's wholesome. I need it. So you needed cute. you needed that you needed to know that it was kind of wholesome but not a really. little a little weird. A little weird, kind of wholesome. A lot of them. Drinking, sp drinking Sprite. Sprite sponsor us. Um it's owned by the Coca-Cola company. Owned by the Coca Coca-Cola company. Sponsor us. Uh, no, don't. I don't like you. <laughs> but also another reason to buy this DVD, because I said this is just going to come down to a sales pitch of me, is first of all, you can buy them for cheap on Amazon. Second of all, look at this. Oh, wait. Oh, autograph. Sorry. Uh, look at this beautiful art. Like, wow. <laughs> like, they committed <laughs> to making this artwork gorgeous. It has no right. It has no right to be that pretty. It's a DVD. It's a DVD of a cartoon. I put this in backwards so that way it's maintained. Which, which, which version is which? Because I do have three copies. So I'm like, oh, that's the fancy one. That's the one I don't copies. watch. It, it happens. You buy lots of DVDs, and you're like, oh, this has a season I'm missing, but it also has all the other ones, but it's a really good deal. And then all of a sudden, you end up with a bunch of copies of single seasons, and then you're like, well, I guess I have to do a giveaway at some point. So I guess, you know, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna dive in there. We're going to dive in there. What do you see for the future of the series? Oh, God, your, just in general? Just, just in general, it could, be, in ge it, it could be episodes that are not made yet. It could be just episodes that you, you know I, you're inevitably going like, to see. I literally, like, halfway through season two, man, I'd, I'm like... Come on, give us some I hot was, takes, Garden. Do we, get, do we get a little shop of horrors? We got Rocky Horror. Do we get a little shop of horrors? No. Damn it. We get a musical... Kinda. Okay, I'm into it. I'm into that. Wait, yeah, kinda. I uh, underline the word kinda. I'll, I'll take kind of. Well, we get we get a rock band. At this point, we get a rock band. That's of. fun. We get a rock band at one point. Do. <laughs> How did you know that Hank would be in the rock band? Because it's the same kind of thing you did. Yeah, yeah. I'm very, very Hanky. You're very like, hanky as a child. I'm a very, I was very Hank personality. Big Hank energy. <laughs> big, B H E, <laughs> hashtag big B H E. Hank energy. Let's make this a thing. Hashtag B H E. Don't make it a thing. It's for you only. It's for me only. It's for me only. Yes. I want to be a panel without a photo. Ugh. So, I mean, I think we've, we've hit all of the marks that I was trying to hit for the worst segment of this panel. 
that we are completely off topic. That thing was totally bonkers. And uh, that you have big Hank energy. I'm going to have to do so much editing to bleep things. You just made my life heck. Oh, heck. Well, I guess the garden. We're going to have to uh, record more episodes later this week, but we should sign off the way we always do. Indeed we should. Ready? Ready? Three, two, one... Go, Go Team Venture! What am I supposed to be doing here? I'm supposed to talk about the Sovereign Simulator? You want me to talk about something that makes you into a giant floating head? Seriously? This is the way the guild comes up with to make money? We get five cents per click. We're on Elon Musk's phone! He's a good kid. He wasn't as good as his dad. Did you ever meet Jovan? No. I heard he on Jeff Bezos' porch one time. Well, why couldn't we just attack someone? We're on the family share plan. So, let me get this straight. They're going to be pretending to be David Bowie, pretending to be the Wizard of Oz. They download the simulator and it goes on their phone and they can do what exactly? I guess I just don't understand. Whatever the kids are into these days, right? So when do we get started? It's me, Tiny Atoyny again. Have you or a loved one been a henchman that stormed Venture Compound and then awoke a reanimated corpse of their former self? Perhaps you had a college internship at Venture Industries and now experience hallucinatory dreams where you thought you had four arms and became a tribal people trying to take over the world called Palamon. Or perhaps your child attended a day camp and came back as a clone slug. If any of these describes you, you could be entitled to involvement in a class action lawsuit for hundreds of dollars. Please contact Tiny Attorney down on the bayou next to the nuclear power station. Remember to look for the big fella on the porch in the rocking chair. I'll be the little guy poking out of him. Tiny Attorney.
And welcome back to the Venture Sisters. We're here today to t present our new favorite tradition that we just made up five minutes ago. Wed, bed, and behead. I will be presenting three different Venture Brothers characters, and we have to decide who to wed, who to bed, and who to behead. Today, we're starting off with the unholy trinity that are three best characters from the show who have displayed very few flaws, if any. Dr. Mrs. the Monarch, Brock frickin' Samson, and Red Death. Dolly, would you like to start us off? Sure. I would like to bed Brock Samson because, duh, Brock obvious. Samson, uh, that's just the obvious choice. He is gorgeous, and who wouldn't want to run their fingers through that beautiful mullet. So there's just too many obvious answers for Brock. So we will move on to my wed. I would want to wed Red Death because he is the perfect man. Absolutely. Even though he does not have skin. Cheekbones for days. He does have cheekbones, yes. Perfect cheekbones. Yes. My, but quite a fan the, of his red. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The red is stunning. And he is the perfect dad. What a sweetheart of a father. He's a caring husband. He loves his wife's meals, even though the brownie gets soggy in the gravy. <laughs> he would definitely be my choice for wed. Behead. I would behead Dr. Mrs. the Monarch. Yes. I know shocking because she would be the ultimate challenge and I could die in the process. It could be the end of me. But if I succeeded, I would be the top dog. I'd be the top woman in the whole venture universe. That's true. And, yes. And I would also win the monarch as an arch for life. Do you think that he would like drop everything with Venture? Yes. Rusty would be nothing to him. I would be his enemy. I would be <laughs> the top enemy of his. I like that your thought with killing Dr. Mrs. is like Highlander. You're just going to reign supreme as the top <laughs> right? Venture woman. Right. There can only be one. Oh man, uh, Rusty and uh, Venture, or Rusty and the Monarch teaming up to uh, to arch you um, because you know Rusty's got a thing for uh, Doctor Mrs. Also, so I'm sure he would feel some some feelings, um, being that they're brothers, like you know, that blood thicker than water, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I just take note? You have a Monarch butterfly in your background. Did you already <laughs> skin her? I, yes, perhaps oh. I have. Maybe that's my dirty little secret. We've really peaked at true arching. <laughs> so, Wed, um, Dolly pretty much took my answer. Um, I think everybody feels the same way about Red Death. Like, he is an awesome husband, a great dad. Um, as someone that has clones myself, like, I appreciate how involved he is. Um, on top of being a, a, a great villain as well. Like he succeeds in, in both areas. He's just a, um, an all around kind of guy. Like he, he's a great catch. Um, so definitely wanna, you know, spend some time with him. And I'm sure in the bedroom would be pretty spectacular. He seems like uh, he likes it pretty, uh, pretty rough, but then the cuddles, cuddles afterwards, lots of cuddles. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I see, see aftercare. That. I see aftercare yeah. being his specialty. He's a he, he's a good daddy. Um, <laughs> a good daddy. <laughs> Bed. Um, I'd have to say, Doctor Mrs. The Monarch. Um, she just looks like fun. Uh, the the um, the cheerleader costume. Um, oh yeah. I mean, come on. Um, it, her and the Monarch really get into some some interesting uh, cosplay in the bedroom and I am down to participate in all of that. I'm sure the monarch would be. Oh, Aren't they canonically yeah. swingers? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that works so, out. Um, you wouldn't get arched for that then. Definitely not. 
Um, but then you'd have to offer a beast to Monarch. You know, I think that he would take one for the team on that. I really do. Um, I'd have to ask him about it. <laughs> or don't tell him and just surprise him. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> And then for uh, Behead, I'm going up against Brock. You're dying. I'm going mono mono wow. against You're gonna die. Brock effing Samson. Oh, I know. I know I'm going to die. This but is I'm your going suicide letter. Absolutely. I'm going to die like the happiest because you know. You know wow. like we're taking out some aggression on each other more than one way. Mm-hmm. Like I- I'm dying happy. Um, <laughs> and I mean, maybe, maybe I can succeed. Um, and, and we die together at the same time. You see where I'm going. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> PG-13. So I'm having fun, like, no matter what I do in, uh, in this, this triad here. So I think the general consensus is we'd all die trying to behave. Right. We're not confident enough that we could win <laughs> against any of them. Yeah. Because let's face it, these are some of the most skilled, equipped, murderous uh, characters on the show. Yeah, none of us would come out alive. Both of y'all said Dr. Mrs. the Monarch in the cheerleader costume, but y'all did not mention the Farmer's Daughter costume. Ah, touche, Mary. Touche. That one, yeah, the blonde wig. I'm not into blondes. Mm. She said having blonde in her hair. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not into myself. Um, uh, I really, I like country, but I don't like blondes, honestly. So it just, it doesn't work for me. I just, I love that whole setup that my pa says I can't have anyone up here in my barn. (laughs) Dolly, I feel like you've pulled that one in the bedroom before um the the farmer's daughter perhaps or perhaps i've had a roll in the hay hay. (laughs) amazing i will admit to that okay all right we're 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 just getting closer with each other by the second (laughs) i'm learning too much about all of you way too fast and now i'm picturing monarch in green body paint That's the only way to do it. That's the only way you're going to convince Beast to take one for the team. Oh. Um, oh. Totally. That is a great one. <laughs> I may be a lowly little henchman at work, but I'm trying my darndest to become a full-time arch. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, up, you're well on your way, kiddo. I have two degrees in arch villainy. Where do where do you go to get one of those? California. Okay. <laughs> Just you know, take, <laughs> California. We got all kinds of degrees. Do you have a link get, for it? Um, I got a link. <laughs> you got a link? Got got a link. Guy. <laughs> What's your major? Arching. <laughs> <laughs> Is that better or worse than an art history degree? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> about the same response she get. I think with that said, we, we have fully covered our three our, our three idealistic top dogs of Venture Brothers. And we've all been top and topped them. Mm-hmm. Doesn't end well in any scenario, but we're here to pretend. I want to thank anybody who's watching this for st- listening to us ramble and hopefully you'll join us on our actual podcast the venture sisters i've been your host calamitous jane with me is the lovely dolly pardon and the fabulous audrey heartburn say bye guys bye guys, bye. Bye guys. that was a weird one ignore me Anyone coming for this baby? Goodbye, 
subject samples of Earth.